Let's start now by having a look at the purifier from the outside and then afterwards we'll take a look at the purifier from the inside and look at the internal parts. This particular 3D model is a bit more complicated than it should be. In order to explain how this fuel purifier works, let's imagine for a moment that these pipes, the ones I'm indicating now, don't exist. So everything that's highlighted now does not exist. We only need our dirty fuel inlet, which can come through this valve, and it's going to be moving into the purifier through this connection in the direction the arrows indicate. That's where our dirty fuel oil is entering our fuel purifier. We've also got a connection on the top for water, which might seem quite bizarre, but I'll explain to you why we have that in a moment. We'll have a water connection that attaches here. Sometimes there'll be two separate valves to make sure that if one of the valves is leaking, hopefully the other valve is not, and then we don't get water dripping into our fuel purifier. If we're using two valves, we call that a double isolation. Whilst we're talking about fluids, let's have a look where our clean fuel oil comes out of the purifier. It actually comes out here, and we'll be able to see it in this sight glass as it's discharged from the purifier. We're separating water from the fuel oil, and the water is going to come out through this connection here. This particular type of purifier would be used for small marine vessels, most likely those burning diesel oil. If we were using this on land, this particular purifier design could be used for light fuel oil applications. The opposite of light fuel oil would be heavy fuel oil, which is used on large commercial vessels, although it's slowly being phased out. But heavy fuel oil could not really pass through this purifier. We would require a totally different design of purifier, as well as heaters and other pieces of equipment. So we've got our dirty fuel oil coming in. It's coming in through this connection. We've got water coming in through this connection. We've got water coming out through this connection. What else have we got here? We've actually got a rotation indicator. That's this item. If I press play, the purifier is now rotating internally. We'll have a look at that in a second. And we can see that it's indicated here. We've got a cap. This cap is used for adding oil to our gearbox. The gearbox casing is here. And we can see our oil level. If we go down here, you can see that the oil level is actually in the middle of the oil level sight glass. If we want to drain the oil, because we're going to replace it every now and again, or replenish it as they say, then we can drain the gear oil here. Once it's been drained, we reapply the drain cap and then we can fill up the oil through this cap here. Attached to the purifier frame or the gearbox casing is the main drive unit, which in our case is an electric motor. This motor will be an AC induction type motor, most likely frequency regulated. VFD, variable frequency drive, or VSD, variable speed drive, same thing. We use these to regulate the speed of the purifier. So we can slowly increase the rotational speed of the purifier. Another way to do this is to use a star and delta wiring connection on the motor, but that's something we really do need to discuss in a different video. We've got these weird sticky out bits that are coming out of the purifier. These actually rotate around like so in a clockwise direction or in the opposite direction anti-clockwise. When we rotate these in a clockwise direction, there's actually two of them, you can see the other one over here. When we rotate them in a clockwise direction, they're screwed into the purifier bowl, which we'll take a look at in a moment. When we rotate them anti-clockwise, they move outwards, detaching themselves from the purifier bowl. We do this because we want to lock the bowl in position. The bowl sits inside here, and when we're performing maintenance, we don't want the bowl spinning around and around. So we apply this item and the one here, sometimes referred to as locking pins, in order to stop the bowl rotating. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comments section. If you'd like to learn more about engineering, then please do check out savory.com.
where you can access over 45 hours of video courses, as well as 3D models like the one used in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and thank you very much for your time.